Okay, so what we're going to do here is a quick little example of how to calculate density. Uh, you're going to follow along with the tutorial and just complete it on the sheet that you were given. All right, so just to start off, uh, density is a measure of the amount of mass within a given volume. This, remember, is a quantitative physical property uh, and is often used to identify and classify substances. So it's a really good forensics tool uh, to use. Engineers use it as well. It is usually expressed in grams per cubic centimeters or grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, another way of doing it is grams per milliliter, uh, and that's because there's there's a simple conversion that you should know, which is that one milliliter of, uh, of volume is equal to one cubic centimeter of volume. So if you had a little tiny cube that was one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, think of a little ice cube or a little sugar pack or whatever that had that sort of shape, that would be equivalent to one milliliter of uh, volume. So always keep that in mind, that nice conversion. So as expressed, uh, density is the D, right? We know that, so that's density. And M is the mass of the object. And V, of course, is then the volume. So it's expressed as a amount of mass per volume or the amount of mass within a given volume. If you want to make a large density or a really high density, okay, so if you want high density, if you want to increase the density, then what you would do is decrease the volume as much as possible and increase the mass. So to get really high density, you want to take a lot of mass and put it inside a really small amount of volume. So this could be the difference between, let's say, a medicine ball. Uh, it could have the same volume as a uh, inflatable beach ball. But the mass of a medicine ball, if you've ever picked one up, they can range to you know up to 40, 50, 60 pounds inside the same amount of volume as a beach ball, which is extremely light and you can bounce around all over the place. So again, a medicine ball would have high mass in a given volume, and a beach ball would have low mass in a given volume, and therefore the density would be lower. So you can keep this in mind that to get high vol density, just decrease volume, increase mass. To get low density, increase volume, and decrease mass. Okay, So you can show that as well to get low density, increase volume, and decrease the mass. So this is high density and this is low density. Okay, got a little table here to show some common elements, uh, sorry, some common substances and the uh, amount of mass that they have per unit volume. So gold has about 19.3 grams for every cubic centimeter. So if you had a little cube that was one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter or one milliliter in volume, you'd have 19.3 grams of gold, okay? Uh, and then moving down to mercury, you can see that it's a little less dense, lead's even less dense, iron's much less dense, aluminum's really not very dense, and that's why we use aluminum cans and they always feel light, it's because they're less dense. You don't wanna make cans out of uh, gold, for instance, one thing would be super expensive because it's more rare, however, it would be much heavier. Uh, same thing. We don't make uh, aluminum out of we don't make aluminum cans or cans out of lead, because again, it would be much heavier uh, and also potentially poisonous. Um, and then you can see that bone ranges from 1.7 to 2.0. Okay, so it d differs uh, on how old you are, how much calcium you get, uh, your all kinds of things. Whether you have uh, any diseases that are uh, destroying your bone marrow and things like that. So keep that in mind. Okay, so. How do we do these calculations? Uh, the calculations are fairly straightforward, you'll see, um, and you'll be able to pick up on it quite quickly, uh, and we'll give you some little hints as well. So it says here that a block of gold occupies a volume of 1.3 milliliters and has a mass of 25.1 grams. Calculate the density of gold. So notice how I underlined a few things. Sometimes underlining these key parts of a question is a really good way of you sorting out what it is you need to find and what it is you need to calculate and also some of the given information. 
So uh, one thing you're going to want to do is we're going to write out the density formula. Now, some people might say, Let, let's get you to write out what you're given as well. So you are looking for the density of gold, so we don't know it. You are, you know the volume of the gold, which is 1.3 milliliters, and you know the mass of the gold is 25.1 grams. Okay, now we write out the formula. Density equals mass over volume. And we, sometimes you can check it off, you can do whatever you want uh, for this, but since we're looking for density, it's already isolated by itself, so that means that we already know the mass, we already know the volume. Okay, you don't need the check marks, but, um, so we already know those two things. So we're able to calculate it directly. Keeping your equal signs lined up is important. Um, if you want to put the equal sign over here and do it, you can. But if you're moving downwards, keep the equal signs lined up. It's, it's important for maintaining uh, the structure of your solution. So the mass is 25.1 grams over 1.3 milliliters. The answer when you put that into your calculator you go 25.1 divided by 1.3 gives us 19.3 now we know that this was in grams and the bottom was in milliliters so grams per milliliter okay therefore density equals 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter a little box around the answer and now we know that's the density of gold if you really want to get fancy you could even put gold as a subscript and so now we know that's the density of gold now notice I did something here I changed the milliliters into cubic centimeters this is a nice a better way to well it's not necessarily better but it's uh, a way of doing it where you can either report it in grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter since mil one milliliter is one cubic centimeter we can do that right away without having to change any of these numbers. If you look back to your chart, we find that gold is 19.3. And so this matches. Okay. They sometimes get a little more challenging because you may have to rearrange the formula a bit. So mercury, which is a liquid at room temperature, so if you held it in your hand, which you shouldn't do because it's poisonous, uh, but if you held it in your hand, uh, it will roll around. If you drop it on the ground, it will turn into little balls and, f and just roll away uh, really quickly. It's pretty cool to see. Um, and if you want to Google it, you can Google uh, videos of people dropping mercury and just seeing how it moves. So in this case, what we have is a cylinder, uh, sorry, a graduated cylinder, and it holds exactly 22.5 milliliters. And they take the mercury, right? And so let's say we have a, you don't have to draw this, but there you go. And it holds 25 milliliters. And they, they fill it up all the way to the top. So the mercury pours into it. And this holds exactly 22.5 milliliters. Okay. Well, clearly that 22.5 milliliters is the volume of the mercury okay and we look at this now and we realize that using the table above calculate the mass of the mercury and we need to use the table because if you're looking at this and you wrote out your equation you write density equals mass over volume and you'd say hmm I'm looking for the mass so I don't know the mass and oh look if I don't have the mass and I'm trying to find, and I have the volume, I don't know the density. Well, in that case, you're not given enough information. So you're going to need to look up at the table, find mercury. Oh, look at that. It's 13.5 grams per cubic centimeters. Okay. So we do know the density, and we don't know the mass. You can use this little triangle over here to figure out how to rearrange the formula if you're stuck. So if you're trying to find the mass, it says take the density and multiply it by the volume. So if we were to rearrange this formula, we would multiply the volume to the other side, and we would get this, right? If I multiply this side by volume and this side by volume, you end up, it divides out on the one side, and it moves to the other side, and you get density times volume. 
isolating equations is extremely important and you'll learn more of that as you move through your years of school from grade 9, 10, 11, and 12. And so if you're stuck, you can just write out um, mass equals density times volume using this triangle system. So I wrote it like this. Um, if you wanted to, you can just switch it because it doesn't really matter at this point. But most people would like to see it like this, density times volume. Okay. So that's the exact, these two steps are exactly the same. I was just showing you that if you wanted to rearrange it without using the triangle, you can do it this way and then just rewrite it this way. All right, now we have everything we need. Our density was 13.5. Our volume was 22.5. Now, since that's milliliters, it's the exact same thing as cubic centimeters. And so the units will work out into grams, and I'll explain that in a second. Notice that when I put in the numbers, I put brackets. In fact, I should go up to the previous question and put brackets around the numbers up there. Please do that as well on your notes. It is extremely important that whenever you're substituting numbers for variables, that you include these brackets. That'll help you in the future for any types of questions where negative values might be in place. Okay, so get used to doing that now. At this point, you just put it into your calculator and we get the result. Three hundred and about three hundred and four uh, grams is the answer. It was actually three hundred and three point seven five. I've rounded it to three hundred and four grams. Why does that work? Well, the units work like this. The density was grams per cubic centimeter, and the volume was milliliters, but milliliters is the same thing as cubic centimeters. So if you notice here, you have centimeters cubed over centimeters cubed, and you're left with grams. Okay? It's not, you're going to learn more about this in grade 11, uh, sorry, grade 10 and 11 as well. Uh, but for now, you can realize that whenever you do density times volume, you're going to end up with the units of mass from here. Okay. Um, you could do the same thing. So if you get a question where it tells you the mass and the density, the mass and the density, and you want to find volume, it would be volume equals mass divided by density. Okay. If you want, if you're given mass and volume, it's density equals mass divided by volume. Okay. That's about it. And you can now go forward and work on the questions um, from the practice sheet.